Hello and welcome to the CPC Certification Review Training. This training is designed to assist you in passing of the CPC Certification Exam. This course is not designed for beginners. You should have an understanding of the coding process prior to taking this review. Compliance and regulatory will be covered by three questions on the exam, testing your knowledge of compliance and regulations under Medicare Parts A, B, C, and D. Applying coding to payment policy, place of service reporting, fraud and abuse, NCCI edits, NCD, LCD, HIPAA, ABNs, and RVUs. We will look at these topics now. Although rare, some patients pay in full for their own medical expenses. The majority of patients will have some type of insurance coverage. There are two types of insurance coverage, private or commercial insurance and governmental insurance. Commercial or private carriers can have both group and individual plans. Group plans are often offered through employers. Individual plans are purchased directly from the insurance carrier. Examples of commercial plans include Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, Cigna, United Healthcare, and many others. Some commercial plans also offer Medicare Advantage plans, which cover seniors and Medicare enrollees. Governmental insurers include Medicare, Medicaid, and TRICARE. Medicare is administered by the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. Medicaid is a combination of federal and state resources, and TRICARE is for Armed Forces personnel and their families. Medicare has four parts. Part A is hospital insurance. Part B is medical insurance for things not covered by hospital insurance, such as physician services, medical supplies, and such. Part C is Medicare Advantage, which is private or commercial carriers such as HMOs and PPOs. These programs must at least be equivalent in coverage to regular Part A and Part B, but can offer additional benefits from the commercial payer as well. Part B coverage is prescription drug coverage. Services provided must be medically necessary to be covered by insurance. There are currently 12 MACs across the U.S. that interpret the Medicare NCDs into local coverage determinations. Billers and coders must know the policies of their local MAC. In my region, Washington State, our MAC is Noridian. A Medicare ABN, Advanced Beneficiary Notice, is a notice that healthcare providers give to the Medicare beneficiaries before providing certain medical services or items. The ABN informs the patient that Medicare may not cover the services or item and that the patient will be responsible for payment if Medicare does not pay for it. The purpose of an ABN is to inform the patient of the potential financial liability before they receive the services or items so that they can make an informed decision about whether to proceed with the service or item or not. It also allows the patient to explore alternative options for coverage or payment. An ABN is typically used when the healthcare provider believes that Medicare may not cover a service or item because it is not medically necessary, is considered experimental or investigational, or exceeds Medicare's coverage limits. The ABN must be given to the patient in advance of the service or item being provided, and the patient must sign the ABN to acknowledge that they understand the potential financial liability. It is important to note that an ABN does not guarantee that Medicare will not cover the service or item, but it does provide the patient with information about their potential financial responsibility. HIPAA with one P and two A's is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. It was enacted on August 21st, 1996. HIPAA is a five-part act, but the part most concerning to the position of a medical coder is Title II, also known as Administration Simplification. Administration Simplification addresses national standards for electronic transactions and code sets, establishes unique identifiers for providers, health plans, and employers to be used nationally, and provides federal protection for the privacy of personal health information. 
The privacy rule is to define and limit the circumstances in which an individual's protected health information, or PHI, may be used or disclosed by covered entities. A covered entity may not use or disclose PHI except either as the privacy rule permits or requires or as the individual who is the subject of the information or the individual's personal representatives authorize in writing. Here's a tip. HIPAA's privacy regulation breaches continue to rise. Always keep in mind the minimum necessary rule. If you don't need the information to complete your job, then don't look at the record. The code sets mandated by HIPAA include HICPICS, CPT, CDT, ICD-10-CM, and NDC. It is important to remember that although HIPAA mandates the use of the specified code sets, it does not mandate the use of its conventions or guidelines, except for the ICD-10-CM. The Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, also known as High Tech, was enacted as part of the American Recovery and Investment Act of 2009. It was signed into law on February 17, 2009 to promote the adoption and meaningful use of health information technology. High Tech strengthened HIPAA rules and established more responsibility for business associates complying with the HIPAA with Subtitle D of the Act. Subtitle D addresses the privacy and security concerns associated with the electronic transmission of health information in part through several provisions that strengthen the civil and criminal enforcement of the HIPAA rules. High Tech also allows patients to request an audit trail of health information made through an electronic record. The Office of Inspector General's mission is to protect the integrity of Department of Health and Human Services programs, as well as the health and welfare of program beneficiaries. The OIG has a nationwide network of audits, investigations, and evaluations which result in timely information as well as cost saving or policy recommendation for decision makers and the public. That network also assists in the development of cases for criminal, civil, and administrative enforcement. OIG develops and distributes resources to assist the healthcare industry in its efforts to comply with the nation's fraud and abuse laws and to educate the public about fraudulent schemes so they can protect themselves and report suspicious activities. If you're interested, the OIG puts out a monthly work plan for items and issues that they are following. Additionally, on October 5, 2000, the Office of the Inspector General published the OIG Compliance Program for Individual and Small Group Physician Practices as a guidance for physician practices to create their own. The Affordable Care Act includes a provision which authorizes the HHS to mandate that healthcare providers and suppliers establish a compliance program as a condition of their enrollment in Medicare, Medicaid, or the Children's Health Insurance Program, also known as CHIP. The Secretary of HHS has yet to announce a date when all healthcare providers and suppliers must fully meet the requirement. There are seven steps to an effective compliance plan as listed by the OIG. MIPS is a combination of three former quality initiative programs, the Physician Quality Reporting System, Medicare Electronic Health Record Incentive Program, or Meaningful Use, and Value-Based Payment Modifier, and one new component which provides a single quality reporting system with a single payment adjustment factor based on individual or group performance in Medicare Part B. MIPS is a budget-neutral program, meaning successful reporters earn positive payment adjustments funded by unsuccessful reporters who receive negative payment adjustments. Clinicians eligible for the MIPS program are physicians, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, clinical nurse specialists, nurse anesthetists, clinical psychologists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, qualified speech-language pathologists, qualified audiologists, and registered dietitians or nutritionists. MIPS performance is based on four categories, quality, 
promoting intraoperability, improvement activities, and cost. Quality is used to assess the value of care to ensure patients get the right care at the right time. Promoting intraoperability is used to ensure the secure exchange of health information and the use of certified electronic health record technology for the coordination of care. The four objective measures are e-prescribing, health information exchange, provider to patient exchange, and public health and clinical data exchange. The goal of the improvement activities performance category is to promote practice access, population management, care coordination, beneficiary engagement, patient safety, and practice assessment, participation in an AMP, health equity, emergency preparedness and response, and integrated behavioral and mental health. There are approximately 90 weighted measures in this quality measure set. The goal of the cost performance category is to create efficiencies in Medicare spending. Cost measures assess a patient's total cost of care during the year or during a hospital stay and or during certain episodes of care. Advanced alternative payment models, also known as APMs, include bundled payments for care improvement advanced, comprehensive end-stage renal disease care, comprehensive primary care plus, and others. MIPS eligible clinicians who are on the participation list of one or more advanced APMs during a determination period, also known as a snapshot, are not required to report MIPS data. They may also qualify for a 5% incentive if they achieve threshold levels of payments or patients through an advanced APM or the all payer and other payer option. Snapshot dates are March 31st, June 30th, and August 31st. Thank you for joining us for this review. If you would like more details about our intensive CPC training or any of our other training programs, please visit our website at medicalbillco.com.